Ahmad Sehindi, also known as Muchatet al Fithani, the reformer of the second millennium, was a prominent Indian Islamic scholar and Sufi who lived during the late 16th and early 17th centuries. He was born in 1564 in the region of Sirhin, which is now part of modern-day India. In this preliminary episode, we are going to simply explore Ahmad Sirhindi's contributions and critics of the notion of Wahdatul Wujud. If you like this video, please hit the like button and share this video. You can also help me out be it PayPal or Patreon, but no pressure to do that. From an early age, Amatir Hindi exhibited a deep interest in religious and mystical matters. He received his education from esteemed scholars and Sufi mentors, which then greatly influenced his spiritual journey. He became a devoted follower of the Naqshbandi Sufi order, one of the Sufi orders in Islam. His spiritual master was Shah Muhammad al-Baqi. Ahmad Sirhindi is celebrated for his significant contributions to Islamic thought and his role in the revival of Islamic spirituality in South Asia. Ahmad Sirhindi's most notable contributions were in the realm of Sufism and Islamic theology. He staunchly advocated for the revitalization of traditional Islamic practices and spirituality, challenging what he saw as the increasing influence of syncretic and unorthodox beliefs in the region. His writings and teachings emphasize the importance of strict adherence to Islamic principles and the pursuit of a personal connection with God through prayer and devotion. One of his key theological concepts was the idea of Muchadid, a renewal of the faith. He believes that God sends individuals throughout history to rejuvenate and purify the Islamic faith. Masir Hinnis saw himself as the Muchadid tasked with revitalizing Islamic spirituality. According to Islamic tradition, Muchadid is believed to be sent by God at the turn of each Islamic century, which occurs approximately every 100 years, to, to renew and purify the faith. Amasir Hindi believed that his mission was to serve as the Muchatid of the 12th Islamic century. His ideas and writings have a profound impact on Islamic thought and the practice of Sufism in India. He promotes a more orthodox and puritanical form of Sufism that emphasizes the importance of adhering to Sharia while engaging in spiritual pursuits. Amasir Hindi was deeply committed to the orthodox interpretation of Islam, emphasizing the importance of following Islamic law rigorously and advocating for a stricter and more conservative form of Sufism. Ahmad Sirhindi passed away in 1624, leaving behind a rich legacy of spiritual writings and a revived emphasis on Islamic orthodoxy in South Asia. His influence extended far beyond his lifetime as his teachings continue to shape the beliefs and practices of Muslims in the Indian subcontinent and beyond, making him a revered figure in Islamic history and spirituality. Ahmad Sirhindi saw himself as the Muchadid of the 16th century based on his deeply held beliefs and his assessment of the religious and spiritual climates of his time. Moreover, he perceived a decline in religious and spiritual practices among Muslims in the 16th century. He believed that many Muslims had become lax in their adherence to Islamic traditions and had started incorporating syncretic and unorthodox beliefs and practices into their faith. During his time, there was a growing influence of heterodox and syncretic Sufi movements that he considered deviating from the core principles of Islam. He was particularly critical of the idea that some Sufi orders were compromising on Islamic legal and ethical norms in pursuit of mysticism. Ahmad Sirhindi aimed to counter these trends by emphasizing strict adherence to Sharia while engaging in Sufi practices. The reforms and teachings of Ahmad Sirhindi were also anchored on the context of the new synthetic religious policies promoted by the Mughal Emperor Akbar. 
During Akbar's reign in the late 16th century, he implemented a policy known as Dini Ilahi, which aimed to create a syncretic and ecumenical religious movement by blending elements of various faiths. Akbar's Dini Ilahi, also known as the religion of God, was a syncretic and ecumenical religious movement promoted by the Mughal Emperor Akbar in India. Dini Ilahi sought to transcend religious boundaries by incorporating elements from different religions including Hinduism, Islam, Christianity, and Zoroastrianism. It aimed to create a harmonious plan of these traditions. Despite its syncretic nature, Dini Ilahi emphasized belief in a single abstract god, thereby retaining a monotheistic core. Akbar encouraged his courtiers to participate in rituals and prayers that honored the religion of God. However, there were no formal places of worship or clergy associated with Dini Ilahi. Akbar's promotion of Dini Ilahi had political and social aims. It aimed to foster unity among his diverse subjects, reduce religious tensions, and enhance his authority as a ruler. Ahmad Sirhindi, as a staunch advocate of orthodox Sunni Islam and a promoter of strict adherence to Sharia, strongly opposed Akbar's syncretic religious policies. His objections and reforms were a direct response to what he saw as a threat to the purity and authenticity of Islamic practice and belief. As a leading figure and the revival of orthodox Sunni Islam, Ahmad Sirindi viewed syncretic practices and beliefs encouraged by Akbar's Dini Ilahi as a deviation from traditional Islamic teachings. Sirindi was critical of the syncretic elements in Akbar's religious policies, such as the inclusion of Hindu deities and practices within the framework that aimed to transcend religious boundaries. In other words, Ahmad Sirhindi's reforms and teachings were also concomitantly a response to the challenges posed by Akbar's religious policies which sought to blur the lines between religious traditions and also considering that the central principle and spirit of Deen Ilahi were adapted from Sufi teachings, especially from Ibn Arabi's Wahdatul Wujud. Ahmad Sirhindi criticized the notion of Wahdatul Wujud, the unity of being, primarily because he perceived it as a theological and philosophical notion that deviated from orthodox Sunni Islamic beliefs and posed potential challenges to Islamic orthodoxy. Wahdatul Wujud, as a prominently propounded by the most influential Sufi Ibn Arabi, suggests that all existence is the Tajali of God and there is a fundamental unity between God and creation. While this notion has been interpreted in various ways, including more nuanced and orthodox interpretations, some interpretations can be seen as blurring the distinction between the Creator and the creation. Ahmad Sir Hindi as a proponent of strict monotheism and the absolute transcendence of God, so this as a theological departure from orthodox Islamic belief, which maintains a clear separation between God and his creation. Some interpretation of Wahdatul Wujud have been accused of bordering on pantheism, the belief that God and the whole creation are one and the same. Ahmad Sirhindi, like other orthodox scholars, is wary of pantheistic interpretation because he considers them as incompatible with the Islamic concept of Tawhid, the oneness of God. In this exact point, Ahmad Sirhindi emphasizes the transcendence of God. He believes in God who is entirely distinct from his creation, beyond human comprehension, and not to be equated with anything in the created world. Wahdatul Wujud undeniably seems to downplay this divine transcendence. Due to being a staunch advocate for strict adherence to Sharia, Sir Hindi was concerned that the proponents and followers of Wahdatul Wujud might prioritize mystical experiences and philosophical speculations over the observance of Islamic rituals and ethical guidelines. It's important to note that Ahmad Sirhindi's criticism of Wahdatul Wujud was rooted in his commitment to upholding orthodox Sunni Islamic beliefs and practices. 
While he critiques certain interpretations of this notion, his broader mission is to preserve the traditional and orthodox interpretation of Islam in the face of what he perceives as deviations and heterodox beliefs within Sufism and Islamic mystical philosophy. In opposing the notion of Wahdatul Wujud, Sihindi coins the term Wahdatul Shuhud, the unity of witnessing or the unity of perception. It is a notion within Sufi mysticism that represents a particular perspective on the relationship between the individual and God. Wahdatul Shuhud is a mystical experience in which individuals can reach a state of consciousness where they witness or perceive the divine unity. In this state, mystics may experience a profound sense of closeness to God, a feeling of divine presence, and a temporary dissolution of the ego. If that is the case, what is the distinction between Wahdatul Shuhud and Wahdatul Wujud? The distinctions between the two can sometimes be subtle and there can be variations in how these notions are understood and interpreted by different Sufi scholars. However, at their core, these notions represent different approaches to understanding the relationship between God, human being, and the whole cosmos in the context of Islamic mysticism. At its core, Wahda Tushuhud acknowledges the fundamental distinction between God and creation in contrast to Wahda Tushuhud, which emphasizes the unity of all existence. In Wahda Tushuhud, Mystics perceive the oneness of God not as an ontological reality where everything is God, but as a subjective experiential apprehension. In other words, the mystic witnesses or perceives the oneness of God within his or her own consciousness or in their immediate spiritual experiences. This perception is deeply personal and experiential, leading to a profound sense of divine presence and unity. The unity of God is perceived subjectively and it doesn't necessarily imply that everything in existence is God. In Wahdatul Wujud, the notion is more radical in that it suggests that everything in existence is the self-manifestation of God and there is a fundamentally ontological unity between God and creation. This notion can be seen as ontological and suggests that the distinction and borderline between God and the creation are illusory. It implies that all of existence shares in the divine wujud. Therefore, Wahdatul Wujud can be seen as making more objective claims about the nature of reality, suggesting an objective unity between God and creation. It implies that this unity exists independently of individual mystical experiences. Wahdatul Shuhud is sometimes referred to as Tawhid Shuhudi because it is closely related to the doctrine of Tawhid which is the central theological principle in Islam denoting the oneness and unity of God. Tawhid Shuhudi can be translated as the witnessed oneness or the oneness as witnessed. The term Tawhid Shuhudi highlights the key aspects of the Sufi notion which is the mystical experience of perceiving the oneness of God in a witnessed or experiential manner. Unlike its opposing notion, namely Tawhid Wujudi, which refers to the external observable unity of God in creation, Tawhid Shuhudi thus emphasizes the internal subjective realization of God's unity through mystical experience. So importantly, Wahdatul Shuhud underscores the subjective nature of the mystical experience. Mystics who attain this state believe that they are perceiving the unity of God in their consciousness, but they do not accept that they themselves and the whole entities in the cosmos become God or that the external world ceases to exist. Instead, it is a heightened awareness of God's presence within the framework of creation. Hence, Wahdatu Shuhud is often seen as a more orthodox or acceptable form of mystical experience within Sufism because it doesn't blur the distinction between God and creation in the way that Wahdatul Wujud can be perceived to do. Accordingly, it is said that Wahdatu Shuhud or Tawhid Shuhudi underscores the real connection between Sufi mysticism and the co-Islamic concept of Tawhid since it is arguably not related to 
pantheism, which aligns more closely with mainstream Islamic theology, which emphasizes the transcendence and oneness of God. While the proponents of Wahdatul Wujud argue for more nuanced interpretations, it has historically been met with suspicion and controversy within orthodox Islamic circles. Indeed, Wahdatul Wujud has loudly been criticized by such Islamic scholars as Ibn Taymiyyah and his followers as potentially bordering on pantheism or as deviating from Islamic teachings. The chief crux is that Wahdatul Shuhud is a Sufi concept that represents the perception of divine unity through mystical experiences while maintaining a clear distinction between God and creation. It is considered a more orthodox interpretation of Sufi mysticism compared to Wahdatul Wujud, which can be perceived as more controversial due to its emphasis on the unity of all existence. In summary, while both Wahdatul Shuhud and Wahdatul Wujud relate to the mystical experience of God, they differ in their understanding of the nature of that experience and its implications for the relationship between God, human being, and the cosmos. Once more, Wahdatul Shuhud maintains a strict distinction between God and creation and it emphasizes the subjective apprehension of the unity of being whereas Wahdatul Wujud suggests a more radical and ontological unity between God and all of existence. These differences have theological and philosophical implications and have been subjects of debates and discussion within Sufi and Islamic intellectual traditions. We'll continue scrutinizing those issues another occasion. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.